This is a game that is very dear to me. Uh, it's been run three times, and um, the title of it, What Are You Worth, is uh, a question that I've been pondering about a lot in my life. Um, and when I saw this movie, How to Get Rid of the Others, which was like a direct ripoff that I tried to make as a dark, um, I really felt inspired that, that this movie had to be made as a game, as a LARP. Because it was not a good movie, but it would be a hell good of a LARP. Um, and at least I, I thought it was. Um, but yeah, I, I can't stop being very nervous about the game and about the presentation, because this game was filmed by Discovery Channel, or a documentary about LARP. So it's going to be shown to, what, a hundred million people or something like that. And that makes me like kind of, ooh, is this like, is this really the thing that we want to show and all that kind of crap? Uh, and it's, it's kind of a meta thing because like, what is the game worth? Is it like the real thing that is worth what we want it to be worth? But yeah, I'm, I'm going to start with the, with the beginning. When I was a child, I was, uh, I had my childhood in uh, Swaziland in the southern parts of Africa. Um, and in the times of apartheid. Um, which was which was dreadful, and I don't remember a lot of stuff. But it always it's like the reason why why um, I made this game because it has references to apartheid and being cruel to people and stuff like that. Um, so it's a game about losers of society uh, and about taking them all in in a sort of near future. Um, a dystopian, dystopian society where in Denmark we have a lot of welfare. Uh, of course, some of you might not relate to that as much. Um, but we have a lot of welfare in Denmark, but we also have like a fear of losing this welfare. Uh, and some, and like the morale in the movie is that the only way we can preserve our welfare is by getting rid of the others, the losers the people that do not contribute, the people that are not worth enough. And that's actually like basically what it's all about. Um, so it's, it's run, it's been run on a school, it's been run on a, like a conference center, it's been run on some different kind of places. And it's about 20, 25, it's, it's really flexible with the amount of players. It could be scaled up and scaled down. Um, and flexible with the NPCs, but the main thing is that you have to have like the same amount of, of NPCs and, uh, and players. What is the NPC? Oh yeah, good question, good question. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking as if you know everything. An NPC is a non-played character, and it describes, uh, or non, an unplayer character, and it describes uh, people in the game that does not, uh, that is not like a participating as a player, but has some kind of knowledge from the game master. So it's sort of a game master, and it's sort of a, a put-in character to move the game in some sort of direction. There's no happy ending, and there's no prison break. That's kind of a rule in the game. Um, but yeah, we have the, the prison cells. This is its pictures from when the, the Discovery was filming it. Um, and actually part of the game is also to have a camera as part of the fiction because it has to be documented and we have to see how uh, people are, are doing and how they're like, if they're contributing or whatever, if it's an okay project, stuff like that. So the camera fits into the fiction, which I really recommend if, you, if you're going to film a LARP, then make a LARP that it's easy to film, where it fits into the fiction and the, the story. Um, and then it also it can also like it can also give something to the players that they might play differently in front of the camera. Um, I wouldn't say better, but differently, and that might be interesting. It's something that you can work with. Um, then the game is about um, it's about killing people um, because if if the players or the characters is isn't worth enough, they will be executed. And then there's like this, this amazing quote from uh, the movie. Human rights, is a so it's a socialist lie. Genocide will set you free. It's a pra uh, practical philosophy. Um, and it's, uh, it's sort of a, an African song, something like that. At least it's presented like that in the movie. Um, that, yeah, it's, it's easier if we just kill people. Then we can like, kill the people that we don't like. 
And yeah, but before we can kill them, then we also have to like judge who can we kill and who can we save. Um, yeah, and then I wrote down here GM choice or player's choice. The first two times I made the game, it was my choice as a GM if the players, when they would die. So I wouldn't tell them, I would just tell the guards, the soldiers, that now they should kill them <coughs> at some point when I thought it was fitting in the game. Um, and then the players could sort of, they could like give a hint that they were ready to die because they're, they had reached their climax and then they were ready to like leave the game by dying. Um, and I, I, I'd like to talk a lot about that, but I think that's for some other time. And then the other thing, it could be the, the third time we made it in the discovery run, uh, it would be a player's choice. So they could, they could, if they were ready to die, they would take off their shoes and they would throw it into the middle of the room as a kind of a meta technique or replacement or whatever we're going to call it. But a, a kind of a sign for the GMs that they were ready to leave the game. And then when you throw out your shoes, then I would go and judge them. Should they die or should they live? And then they would either be set free or killed. And then a last point about the, the game is the trap with the psychos. If you have um, if you have a prison cell game, um, you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of, of like downtime. <coughs> or you easily get a lot of downtime, so it's very important that the players have some good relations to each other, um, and that they have like a, a goal for how they're going to interact. And in this game, nobody knows each other. They've, they've just been pulled in from the street, and they all think that the other the other people in this cell deserve to be here, and they deserve to go free. Which makes an interesting dynamic because then you kind of trap with psychos that thinks you should die, and if everybody thinks that, you have a lot of evil game mechanics just the players between. So it makes even more like tension to the game. Um, yeah, and then the last thing, the interrogation. You would be judged by shrinks, economists, statesmen, doctors, different kind of people that represented. Um, the judging society that would judge if you should die or live. How much time do I have? Uh, okay, awesome. Um, yeah, they would judge the, the players, and then if they were living or, or dying, it would be through like a, an economist thinking about money and then judging in that kind of value. So money is worth a lot of stuff, and then how much money are you worth? And they would talk about that. And then the doctors, how healthy are you? Are you healthy enough to survive? And then if people had like sicknesses in their character, of course they, they had to be executed. You know, that, that makes really good sense. Um, yeah, and then there's like this military presence in the game, which uh, is a really, it's really hard to make it right. Because you have to have this balance between there shouldn't be too many guards, but there should also be like enough guards so it's not too hard to be the guard. Um, because it's not really interesting to be a soldier just walking around, not really doing anything, but just bullying people. It's hard to get people to play that kind of character, at least in this game, uh, when they don't have that much authority or, or action. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to end with this Discovery Channel thing. What I've heard, it hasn't been shown yet, but it might be shown in about September. So I'm really <coughs> looking forward to actually seeing what, what it, how they're going to present the game and how they're going to present LARP through this game. Uh, because this might be, be shown as a really like psychotic, evil, we are satanic kind of game. But it might also be shown as a really interesting uh, critique of society kind of game and kind of uh, whatever uh, hobby we're doing. So that makes me both excited but also very nervous. But yeah, having um, okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna end with this. Um, having Discovery Channel in your, in your game or having like a big media is really intimidating. Um, and yeah, you have to think a lot about planning it out with loca locations for them to film and uh, tackling it in a proper way, having the right people to to talk with them and stuff like. But that was that was what you were. Thank you very much.
do like 30 seconds on how we made the characters since we're drunk? <coughs> oh, yeah. Um, what, what, what? Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. We'll do it this way. The way that we made the characters really short was that we made it, uh, the players had to turn in a, a kind of a application to the game where they talked about their prejudice towards other people. So who do you think is a loser? Who do you think deserves to, to be in this prison? Is it an evil uh, capitalist banker uh, trying to ruin everybody's day? Is it, is it the narcotic uh, junkie in the street? Is it, you know, who, who is it who is evil? Uh, who, who, need, who do we need to get rid of? And then we would write the character based on your, on your shadow, or so to speak. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting way to make a character to be like shattering people to what they think about.